Diane, I'll start with you. You actually voted for death. Yes, I did. How hard was that? I, I can't begin to express how hard it was. It was one of those factors of when I filled out the jury questionnaire, I said, I can do it. Um, this is something I've believed in my whole life. If you do the crime, uh, you need to pay the time. You need to be held accountable for your actions. Um, I felt that all the way through. And the day that it was turned over to us uh, for the penalty phase, um, I went home and spent the whole night um, assessing how I could do it if I could actually say she um, should be put to death. And um, I got to that answer. Was there something particular that tilted you towards it? Probably, well, I, I, sh I shouldn't even say probably. It was definitely looking at all of the aggravating factors that um, were part of that crime, i.e., um, the brutality of it, um, the cover-up, the lack of remorse, the untruthfulness all the way through, and um, it was just a matter of when I looked at the mitigating factors, those mitigating factors being um, was she abused, her age, her criminal history, those just did not weigh enough in my mind to look at what she had done. Mark, you have a question for Diane. Yeah, Diane, put us there with words. You're deliberating now on the penalty phase. Obviously, those eight in favor of death made their positions clear. What about the other four? What did they say as the reasons why they could not impose death? Was it generically because they just couldn't do it, or they felt that there were mitigators? They all felt there were mitigators. And the way the... What did they say? Uh, the way the jury instructions are given to you is... Um, you look at the eight mitigators that were presented before us in the penalty phase, and I, to be very honest, I cannot remember all eight of them, but, but some of them were the things that Jody could accomplish uh, if she were to live. It was the fact she was 27, no criminal history. And then it, there was a big factor on she had been abused, that as a child and in her relationship with Travis. Okay. And that was key to uh, many of the people. Those were some of the mitigating factors. And then remember that all of the evidence that was presented before us in the actual criminal case, that evidence could be used as mitigating factors. And so some of those people looked at text messages and um, voicemails, et cetera, that had been left and felt there was some abuse there. And that was their personal decision. And it was up to each person to assess that and weigh it how much it meant to them. Tara, let me turn to you. You were an alternate. My question is, A, after having spent all those months dedicated to really putting your time in and evaluating this case, suddenly you find out you're on the outs. What was that like? And secondly, had you been in, would you have voted for death? It was very, very devastating when I actually heard my number called. I was kind of in shock. Um, as soon as we left the courtroom to go into the jury room, I started crying. Um, I was fully invested. I asked a lot of questions. And to hear your number called and know that you're not going to be able to make that decision, it's very, very difficult. Um, had I been in the jury room, I thought that Jody deserved death as well. And Tara, you were the one that asked some of those snarky questions. Tell us about that. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I think one of my most important questions that I asked, and I asked it because I really wanted to know what she was going to say, it was after all the lies you told, why should we believe you now? Because, oh, you know, cool. a lot, you know, I know personally, I did not believe her, you know, halfway through all the stories and, and all the lies that she was telling. So I wanted to see what kind of answer she would really give us. And, and Mark, I know you have a question, but she's the one, Tara's the one that was asking those questions that we were so grateful for during the, during the trial. <laughs> Well, yeah, Tara, apparently we're Twitter friends, and I followed some of your tweets, and one of the things that you wrote was, Jody is psycho. What did you mean by that? What did you really mean by that? Well, um, I, I meant the fact that she, she did all of this stuff, and she can literally sit there with a straight face and say, I didn't do it, as far as the real reason that she probably did it, saying that, you know, the abuse and the pedophilia, and she just sat there with a straight face. I, I don't understand how she would be able to do that if she was a normal human being. Well, Jenny, do you know she wasn't? Yeah, yeah she, she's not a normal human being. <laughs> there you go. But first of all, I want to thank both of you for coming out yes, and talking indeed. to everybody. Yes, 
like that's brave to show your faces and go through this. But my question is, with this outcome not being exactly what you wanted it to be, do you believe that justice has been served? Do you believe in the system? I think we have to believe in the system. Um, that's what we work under. Um, do I like it? No. But it was an individual choice, and um, it, it's a hard choice to make. It's a hard decision to make. It's probably the hardest one I've ever faced in my life. This has been the hardest five months of anything that I've gone through in my life experience. So it is part of our system, and, it, and we have to abide by it and, and, and work with it. And, Diane, in spite of it being so difficult for you to come to terms with giving the death penalty, you're the juror that mouthed the words, I'm sorry, to Travis's family. Tell me where that came from and what you were meaning there. came right out of my heart. Um, I, like, like Tara said, we were very invested in this. We had spent five months together. We heard a lot of information, ta taken a lot of notes. And then going through almost a month of deliberations by the time you, you heard closing arguments and on it and our deliberation process and time off, et cetera, it was almost a month period. Um, there was a lot of emotion there. And I was so committed to making sure that we could work together. We had done so well as a cohesive work group to get that the conviction on premeditated murder and also to show that aggravation had, or it, it was proved to us that aggravation had occurred, it was aggravated. And to not be able to come to a consensus and, and actually issue a unanimous verdict in the penalty phase was just, it, I took it very personally because I wanted to see it a unanimous decision. Either way, I wanted to really see it a unanimous, but there was just no way we could get there. Tara, do you think that had you been on that jury, it would have made a difference? Well, obviously, I only have one vote, um, but I do think that if I were able to give my perspective on, and my theory of how I thought things happened, um, you know, maybe it could have swayed a couple more people, but those people chose their answer for a reason, and it, it's not going to do any good, I guess, to speculate on what, what I could what have could changed. could have been, yeah. yeah. Di now, Diane, you told me, True. but hang on a second, one quick second question, Mark. Uh, Diane, you told us back in the green room that when Stephen and I guess Samantha, too, was giving their testimonial, you, you were f maybe a few feet away from them. What was that like? Uh, that was absolutely, um, when they call them an impact statement, let me tell you, it had an impact that was unreal. Mm -hmm. um, Stephen and Samantha were probably about five feet directly in front of me. I wanted to reach out and hold them. I saw how angry and upset Stephen was, but so emotionally distraught. Um, I think that that, you know, we never knew what their family was really all about until that day because I did not know that there were eight siblings in that family. Um, none of that history was given to us in court and so we kind of surmised that that was a family as we walked out but we really didn't know until they stood before us that day and I think that's what precipitated me to say I'm sorry I was so distraught over um, not being able to re re reach a unanimous verdict and as I walked out it just was heartfelt it was something that I couldn't I couldn't stop it, it was just, I hadn't thought about it, I just did it. And Tara, how about you? How did it affect you? Well, the impact statements were definitely probably one of the top emotional days of my life. Um, like Diane said, to hear what all they've been through and to see that Jody did so much more than kill Travis. She has fe affected so many more lives out there. And to actually hear that, it was devastating. You know, I didn't know the verdict when we walked in. And when the verdict was read, I lost it. I could not control my emotions. Um, I just, I, like Diane, I just, I, you know, I personally felt like the family was let down because you could tell by the statements and everything that they wanted Jody to get the death penalty.